our podcast, we have Mike Trish from the University of California, Los Angeles about the UC application. Mike Trish is the Deputy Director of Undergraduate Admission at the University of California, Los Angeles. He has worked at many other institutions where he was the Director of Admissions for Recruitment and Outreach at the University of Illinois, Senior Assistant Director and Interim Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Northeastern University, Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Vanderbilt University, and as the Assistant Director of Admissions at Purdue University. Welcome to the show, Mike. Happy to be here. Yeah, that's a laundry list of a lot of uh, different places. Yeah, it's been. I've been very lucky to have great opportunities and also work at a, a wide range of universities that work with both Common App and now the UC App. And so I think it's been helpful in counseling and advising students on their, their options, especially during this time of the year. Yeah, and and that's really great information because right now, you know, since the UC application for the University of Applica- of uh, University of California came out August first, there may be a lot of students asking some questions because, like you mentioned, like you know, since you've worked at so many different application systems, we're in an era of Common App, another application system called the Coalition, the Direct Applications, and there's so many many outlets where students can apply to colleges now. So I wanted to, uh, to clarify clarify this for all our listeners. So what system does the UC system use for their college applications and how early and how late um, for those procrastinators out there um, can students submit the UC applications? So one thing that's important for all students to know is the University of California system, which includes all nine undergraduate UC campuses, only accepts the UC application. We do not participate in the common application or the coalition app or the universal app. It's the only way to apply to the University of California is through our own application, and that's one or up to all nine of the campuses. And the UC application is available on August 1 every year, and a student can go in. They can start filling out the application, but they cannot click submit until the month of November. So the submission window is November 1st through the 30th, and the deadline to apply to the University of California is November 30th. So great. That gives a big amount of days and times for students to kind of play with the UC application before they actually submit it. But November 30th is a hard set time for students to submit. And that specific time before midnight, they have to submit that application electronically, correct? Okay. And then if a student's on the Common App and they're like, wait, where's the UC system? It's because it's at the University of California.edu website. That's correct. And from each of our campus websites, there's a link to the application itself. So if someone went to admission.ucla.edu, they would find a link to the UC application as well. Great. So since the University of California system created one application for all nine undergraduate campuses, how is it possible for a student you know, to kind of figure out how to apply to different UCs when there's so many different majors for each of the campuses? Yeah, one of the nice things about the UC application is when it comes to majors, it's very similar to the Common App or things like that, where when you choose a campus, you actually have a specific list of majors that you can apply to for that campus. So a great example is at UCLA, chemistry falls under our College of Letters and Science. But at UC Berkeley, chemistry is its own school. And so when a student's looking through the list, they're not putting a major and then choosing the campus. They first choose the campuses, and then for each campus they're interested in applying into, they would select one primary major within a school or college that they're interested in majoring in. The UC application does allow a student to choose an alternate major. However, every campus will review that differently. For example, at UCLA, the only instance where we would consider an alternate major would be if a student applied to our School of Engineering in one field of engineering and put an alternate as another field of engineering. If they put anything other than that, we would not review them for an alternate choice. But some of the other campuses absolutely could admit a student to their alternate choice. So when they're choosing the major, it's important to note what school or college does it fall in at each of the UC campuses, and is it even necessary to put an alternate choice um, for that campus? Will it be considered? 
And what would you recommend for our students the best way to find out that information? Because a lot of times students would assume all UCs are alike. They offer the exact same major. But like you mentioned, one campus major could be under one college versus another. So what's the best strategy for students to approach this so they know this ahead of time before starting the application? One thing they could do, kind of two steps. One would be once the application is live, they could indicate each of the campuses they're interested in and then each of the schools or colleges at that campus are listed and the majors that are available for direct entry are listed on the application. Then they could go back to the website and do some research. If it's prior to August 1 or even after that, each of our websites has a link to our majors and minors that we offer. Usually that's under a prospective student section of our website or something like that. And so uh, a student could explore the majors and minors that are offered and then kind of make the decision or connect with someone in admissions to understand what are the pros and cons of choosing one major over another. Are there options to change majors, switch majors, things like that. Okay, so doing some homework beforehand would help a lot. And there's a lot of different information out there for students. The last thing you'd want to be doing is on November 30th, opening the major section of the application and wondering what you're going to put down. Yeah, I I do know those students, and that's why, which has motivated me for this podcast. So thank you again, Mike, for doing this. Yes. So when a student does uh, uncover the UC application, they're going to get a lot of questions about, you know, demographic information, personal insight, prompts, uh, listing their courses, test scores, and more. So do any of the campuses weigh a section of the application more than another? There's no weight assigned to any of the sections. So we don't go into the process kind of with the algorithm mindset. It's it's a holistic review. We're looking at the entire person. So one section is, there's no mathematical calculation. So I think that's an important thing to mention. First and foremost, we are admitting students to a university. Um, And so the academic elements of the application are probably going to carry a little more weight in the holistic review because we need to know first and foremost that we are not setting up someone to fail in the academic setting of any of the UCs. So by the section of the application where we understand that is the self-reported academic record, the standardized test scores, and any other academic information. Very rarely could someone be performing at a less than ideal level in their academics and have a strong personal side and would they gain admission? Um, Because we need to know that we're admitting someone who can come into our campus environments, any of the UCs, and thrive in the classroom, but also in terms of making an impact and giving back to the campus community. And so we're really looking for balance in both of those. But first and foremost, we need to know that someone can do the work, succeed in the classroom, and will graduate in four years. And that's why I would give the academic part of the application a slight lead in terms of balance, because that's critical to student success. The personal side is still something that, at the end of the day, everyone is admitted based on a review of their activities, their work experience, their answers to the personal insight questions, any additional information we ask about who they are is extremely important. But at the end of the day, we're admitting them to an academic institution. Yeah, because you guys do a lot of research based on like track record, past high schools. And one thing I think a lot of a lot of assumptions are made just because you guys are a public institution, you do look at it. I know you mentioned holistic, but I remember somebody mentioning like, well, it's a really a human review you know, of the whole person, you know, and, and like you said, the academics are strong, but, and that's an important part, but you also look at all those other elements. So it contributes to each other. Um, you also mentioned self-report. A lot of times students don't know what that means. So, cause they assume like, oh, I'll just send my transcripts and then they'll say, wait, what are they asking me here? All these classes, can they just see my transcript? So can you explain to our listeners what that means to self-report their coursework? Yeah, so for the UC application process, you actually, a student does not submit an official transcript at the time of applying for admission. One whole section of the application is what we call the self-reported academic record. And that's where a student should get a copy of their transcript from their school or if they have access to it through one of their, their software programs a school may utilize. They sit down at the UC application and they actually enter their school 
and based on from a drop down menu or they would enter it if for some reason it's not in there and based on the selection they make for their school it kind of pre-populates the academic section with some information and then they choose the courses that they've taken from their school over the past four years total of high school and they enter them into the UC application with a grade. We do not allow pluses or minuses, so it's just an A, B, C, D type of grading system. If for some reason one of the classes they took is not offered um, as a connection to their school, there's a section of the application where they can list other courses if they weren't listed in the self-reported record, say, for SI. And so that would be, they kind of have a wide range of opportunity to get every class they've taken listed in the UC application. They also self-report any courses that they've taken that weren't offered at their high school. So if they took some classes at a local community college or at a four-year university, they would list those courses as well and put the grade if there was one. For senior year, they just list the courses and then they, they put in progress because there are no grades um, for those courses. The final element about the self-reported record is if a student has any advanced math or a language other than English in their middle school years, they would list the course they took and the year they took it, but they don't list the school or the grade. And that's just for our knowledge about why they were in advanced math or um, a language other than English by the time they entered high school. Okay. So it's really important to still get that transcript, even though you guys won't be receiving it, but, and also maybe use one of your counselors at your high schools just to double check that information so that you make sure you show a full picture of all the coursework. And if it's not listed, they could go, there's a section where they could mention those other courses on there um, and explain what the activities they did in that class were. Exactly. Great. And the and what are some key elements on the UC application that students should really be aware of and, and, and focus on? I think that um, we've talked about a few of them. First and foremost, that self-reported academic record. Um, accuracy is critically important there. So setting aside time, getting a copy of the transcript or having it and actually putting in the, the effort to make sure that everything's entered correctly, you haven't missed anything, that you haven't entered anything incorrectly, very, very important. That's a key element because academic you know, success is a, a, a big part of our review process. Right. Another part of it would be on the personal side, the personal insight questions. Um, this is a, a part of the application where a student can choose from eight questions, any four they would like to answer. And with those answers, our goal is to get to know more about the students. And too often students just miss that opportunity to go more in depth, to be more personal, to share insightful perspective about who they are, what they value, what they're really interested in, what they've done with their time. And the students who are more personal, who give more insight into who they are, tend to be the students who are going to gain admission with that factor of the application considered. The personal insight questions are not essays, they're answers to questions, and so the students, that's a key part of the application because it is not a common app essay. It's an answer to a very kind of pointed question, and we're looking for content. And so you combine that self-reported academic record with that personal side, and that's a part they really have a lot of control over now. Those are probably the two most pivotal, pivotally important parts of the UC application, and students should spend a lot of time kind of on both of those sections, um, making sure they're presenting themselves in an accurate way and giving the reader some insight into who they are. Yeah, and I love how you mentioned that these are not essays because I think that holds students back um, for being showing their true self and kind of like treated like as an interview on paper and being really authentic and real with the reader on the other side. Um, that's exactly it. Yep, that's a great recommendation. Now, there are a few majors that the UCs offer um, at various campuses that require a supplemental form, like for the nursing program and others in visual performing arts. Can you discuss these supplemental applications and what students should be prepared for? Yes. So if a student's applying to um, kind of anything in the like College of Letters and Science, uh, in most cases, the UC application will probably be the main focus of an application review and decision. But for what you could call specialty schools, things like you mentioned, nursing, visual performing arts, possibly schools like engineering or music, um, they will probably be looking 